Okay, everybody, next up, we are going to look at other assemblies. So now that you've been through the process of developing one of your assemblies, you'll realize that everything else is just kind of an iteration of the same thing when it comes to simple assemblies. So um, here, let's take a look at the, the floor. Okay, so the construction of uh, floor assemblies, if I can find that marker that I had right here, um, is very, it's very similar to a wall, right? Down here, if this is like the end of your wall, so I'll just scratch that, right? If this is the end of your wall, you're going to have um, an end joist, and then you're going to have wood joists that go across like that. It's really that simple. Um, so the that whole assembly, the, the end joist or ribbon joist or something, I don't know. I don't know the technical terms for them that well. But um, the end joist and all the joists that get spaced out in your, in your uh, model, at least at the SD level when you're starting a project, you can represent the same way, just with a singular mass. Um, so we're going to take a look first and see if there's anything like that that's already built. And hey, look at that, there is. Um, we've got wood joist, 10 inch wood finish, or a few other things. Um, so let's go to wood joist, 10 inch wood finish. And uh, I want you to just take a look at that structure. So we're going to hit edit type. We're going to take a look at the structure. And we're going to look at how they built it. Okay, so there's a difference here in how they built um, this wall versus how they built the, um, or how we built the wall. Okay, so for the wall, we had one structure. It was the wall core. Yes? How do you get to that menu? I, I don't own that menu right now, but I don't okay. have Okay, um, well, I mean, so you have to have that floor set up. Yes. And then hit edit type. And then go to structure and hit edit. Okay, all right. How's that possible? Okay, thank you, I got it. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, there's a, there's a primary difference between this um, assembly and the other assembly. What is it? Two structures, right. We have two elements for structure. Um, can anybody venture to guess why that might be? All right, so we have structure and we have plywood. <laughs> okay, um, so the reason, the reason that plywood is considered structure in this case is because your, your, your measurements structurally, like your, your top of structure of that floor plate, is measured to the top of the plywood. Okay, so where uh, where the wall, you really only have one structural core to worry about. It's not really going to be measured to anything. Um, well, I mean, it obviously is going to be measured to something, but you're going to measure it to the stud most likely. Um, but anyway, so so the plywood that's going to be your top of floor elevation. And that's a very key element for architectural design. So um, everything from there is like your sill plates are going to be at the top of floor elevation. Your floor finishes are going to sit on top of that, the top of floor elevation. So um, anyway, you'll, we're going to get down into the details on this kind of stuff later on, but I want you to just kind of realize that that is different. And that's why you have up here the oak flooring, three quarters of an inch, is above that. So um, I'm going to go uh, get into another view real quick that you guys haven't seen before, but I don't want you to jump into that view right now. Um, I just want you to take a look at it. So I'm going to go to um, view and section, and I'm just going to take a little section across the building here and say go to view. I'm going to show you guys this in um, fine detail. How do you pull up the section? What's that? How do you pull up the section? You don't, have to I don't follow along. I just wanted to show you. Okay. So um, here, oh, the oak flooring is not. So this isn't how I would have modeled it. But anyway, so um, how I would have modeled this here, and I want you guys to actually take this out. Um, I want you to take oak flooring off of this assembly, okay? Because this particular assembly is specific to the structural element, which is the, the plywood. So I'm gonna delete that and hit okay, hit okay. And so it should look like that, where the plywood is right up to that level. Okay, so um, similarly, 
um, you guys won't see the section, but I just I want you to just be aware that it's like this. Okay. So anyway, the other thing about flooring that I want you to be aware of is the same principle applies to um, concrete. So if I select this element and I go to a um, three inch lightweight concrete floor assembly, it now looks like this, but the concrete goes up to that level. Okay. So remember floors extend down and walls will extend up or other elements will extend up. Okay. Um, let's get rid of that. Don't need that view anymore. Um, so anyway, that's a concrete floor. I want to switch that back to wood finish. Okay. Um, I have another one here that I want to switch to the same assembly. So I'd like you guys to just make sure that all of your floors are that assembly before we proceed. All right, so um, next up, I just wanted to show you real quick uh, a little bit about how for small projects, it's advisable um, from a BIM standpoint, how you would want to set up your, your interior flooring. Um, it's, this is more of an interior design principle, but you'll see when you go to the architecture tab and you go to floor, um, oh, never mind, that was a wall element. Um, anyway, we're going to start a new one, right? So, so um, for architectural flooring, generally speaking, you're, you're, you're uh, how do I want to put this? Um, okay, so how many of you are familiar with a, a finished plan? You guys know what a finished plan is? Yeah, maybe one of you. Um, okay, let me pull something up real fast. Okay, um, this is a, an all right example of an architectural finish plan um, where certain rooms have different finishes on those floors and you can actually see the patterns of those finishes. Um, the reason I had you take out that oak flooring from the assembly is that generally speaking, your building is going to be framed across, if, especially for our building and the plan that we're looking at. The building just gets framed all the way across. Um, and, and it doesn't get a different floor assembly um, or, or end joist for every finish that's on the floor, okay? Because the sill plates just sit on top of it, right? And it just runs across. And then what we do um, in construction is we actually put the finishes on top of that. So from a BIM perspective, BIM means building information modeling, right? You want to actually model it as accurately as you can. And it is advisable in many cases. So let's pretend that this is like a... a like a studio apartment or whatever. Um, and this is uh, like the bedroom. Okay, so bedrooms are gonna have, um, you know, you know, have you ever seen like a split studio it's like this? It just has a couple steps up to a little platform and that's where you put your bedroom, semi-private. It's kind of like that. It's pretty hip, it's pretty hip. Um, so, so that floor right here is, um, that floor right here is actually going to be um, carpet and then we're gonna do hardwood on the rest. Because it's, it's like a bedroom area. You want it to be softer of noise sometimes. I don't know. I like carpet in the bedroom. But um, anyway, it's not a very fancy place. It's, it's one of those like economy places where everything is carpeted and all the walls are white. All right. Um, all right. So uh, anyway, what I, what I want to point out to you guys is that working with finished floors is a little bit different because you have to offset the height of those floors, right? Because if you use a floor family and you're going to schedule them as floors, then um, everything goes down. So you notice when we set up the assembly for the, um, for the floor with the oak flooring, it actually had the oak flooring um, below the first floor um, assembly level, right? Uh, or the first floor level, I should say. So uh, we're gonna create a new floor. So I'm gonna click on floor and I'm gonna say edit type. And this time, because I don't wanna mess with the generic ones, I'm gonna leave those there. Um, we're actually gonna create a new type. Rather than modifying an existing type, we're going to create a new one. So click on Duplicate. Um, you just need to go to Architecture. Whoops. Let me cancel that. Go to Architecture, go to Floor, and then click on Edit Type. And then we're going to duplicate that type. Now, um, I had two materials. We're going to have hardwood floors and we're going to have carpet. So um, one of them I'm just going to call um, 
carpet. Yeah, there you go. Cheap. <laughs> yeah, cheap. Hey, some carpets are pretty nice. We'll bring back like shag from the 70s. How about that? Like or I, I moved into a house once in uh, Garden Grove and it had orange shag carpets everywhere. Orange. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, that thing hadn't been updated in 30 years at least. Okay. Oh no, I haven't. I haven't seen that. I've I've got horror stories from buildings in Queens. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, okay, guys. Let me gather your attention again. A lot of chatter. Sorry, I went on a tangent. Um, so uh, the function here, you can leave it as structure because it doesn't really matter. I mean, you have to have a structure on it, so just leave it as structure for now. Um, and the material, we're gonna change that material to. Let's see if there's a carpet. There is. Hey, look at that. And look, it's red. Wait. Let's change it to orange. Okay. So um, the key here, guys, is I want to change the thickness of this material to be something that's really, really thin. So most carpets are going to be like maybe a half an inch thick max, maybe even less than that. So I'm just going to stick with a half inch for this one. Half inch and then hit OK. And then you can hit OK again. So um, since I did that through um, activating the floor command, now I'm ready to draw a floor, right? So I'm going to draw a floor with the rectangle here, and I'm going to drag it across my bedroom nook area thing, OK? So be aware, guys, that where I pulled this from is actually going to be the inside face of the gypsum board. Okay, so that's kind of important at some point, right? Um, it's okay if you make small mistakes, but generally speaking, you want to model these accurately, okay? And then I noticed that I need to switch um, this little corner over here. And I'm going to trim this out like that. And then I'm going to use um, my trim extend to corner tool, that nifty one that I showed you last week. And I'm just going to very quickly clip that edge and then clip this edge here and hit check. All right, you're going to notice that that floor is missing. That's because it happens to be under my building because it automatically associated with zero feet, zero inches with level one. So I need to elevate it so that it's above that floor assembly, which happens to be at three feet. So knowing that this floor assembly is a half inch thick and the floor assembly is, th or the top of that floor assembly is three feet, how high do I want to elevate my carpet? Three feet and a half inch, exactly. So we're going to go three feet, 0.5 inches, and then you'll see my carpet now exists in my building. Questions? You guys need to see it again? Okay, I'm going to stop this video and then we'll uh, go through it again.